So in a previous video, linked in the description below, we covered creating your own border for your desired sheet size on a SOLIDWORKS drawing, drawing a title block, and adding any relevant notes and fields there. Now we're going to continue on setting up our custom properties to automatically populate the data that we want on our drawing template. We'll save out our sheet format, specify our units and drafting standard, and finally save out the drawing template. Previously we had just got done setting up static text on our drawing sheet format, uh, including things like callouts for part number, description, material, and date, which we wanted the actual values to automatically populate from the parts properties. Now you might be wondering how are we going to achieve this auto population of properties? So that's also going to be done through a note. I'll choose to add a note here. And I'm going to start off with the sheet property. So let's click down where it says sheet scale. I'm going to place a blank note and rather than me typing anything in, I'm going to come over to the left hand side of my screen where I have the option to link to property. I choose link to property. The sheet properties are going to be set to the current document. So here I'm going to pull from property names and I'll see the available properties that are in here. And I'll have things like sheet scale and current sheet and total number of sheets since these are the properties of a SOLIDWORKS drawing. So I'll choose sheet scale right there and click OK. And SOLIDWORKS automatically pastes in the relevant code to get that field to auto populate. And I'll just repeat this process adding a property for current sheet. and an additional property for total number of sheets. Now when it comes to the properties here, I want these to be populating from the part model that's inserted onto the drawing. And right now I don't have a part model inserted onto this drawing. So to make my life easier, what I'm going to do is save this I'm going to right click to go to regular edit sheet mode so I'm not in the sheet format anymore. You could also click the top right confirmation corner. So it's a subtle change but you'll see in this mode I shouldn't be able to edit anything in the sheet format. So it's a common mistake for beginners making templates. So we'll draw everything in the sheet and then you'll see that you can accidentally drag things around that you shouldn't have access to while you're in the drawing environment. So I want to insert a model onto here. So I'm going to go to my view layout and model view and browse out for a relevant model that has the type of properties that I would typically be using. And I insert my model onto the drawing sheet. Now this is a temporary measure. We're not going to keep this model here but it's going to allow me to access the custom properties that are on the model. So if I look at my model and I go to the File Properties tab, you'll see that there's some properties like description, part number, material, finish. These will become available to me once this is placed on the drawing. So back over at the sheet, I want to go right back in to edit the sheet format. And that's again a right click edit sheet format. You'll see your model disappears, which is fine. I'm going to zoom on down and place additional notes. And use that link to custom property button. Except this time, instead of linking to current document, I'm going to link to model found here. And you can see it's referencing the part file that I inserted. So now I can pull from the properties of that part file. So I'm going to pull from part number and we should see that automatically populate. And I'll repeat this process. This one will be pulling in from model found here, the description, material, and date. For the date, we have the option of long and short date. Short date is probably going to be formatted the way that you're used to. So 
Since all these properties are stored in the sheet format, I don't need to worry about a user accidentally overwriting them. If there are fields that you want a user to be able to input, even though they're in your title block, that's what these title block fields are for here. So you can define areas that the user is allowed to enter in data. And the title block fields, among many other more advanced features, are things we cover in our drawings training course. So once we think we have things set up the way that we want, we're finally ready to exit out of the sheet format. And now I'll actually delete off that temporary view that I placed by selecting it hitting delete on the keyboard. And if we do a rebuild on our drawing, and I hit control B on the keyboard to rebuild, we'll see that all those properties appear to have disappeared but the references for them are still there. So this is actually what we want our drawing to look like before we save out the sheet format and template. If the sheet format's already associated with the drawing template, then upon trying to create a new drawing, you'll be instantly presented to the drawing sheet. On the other hand, if there's no sheet format associated, like we saw with the default drawing template, when you go to create a new drawing, you'll always be prompted to choose a sheet format. In order to avoid this, we're going to make sure we associate our sheet format to the drawing template before we save it. And we do that by loading the sheet format into the sheet properties. So to do this, we're going to save out the sheet format first. And we're just going to do a file, save sheet format. And this is going to save, again, the title block, the sheet border, and my sheet size. So I'll do a save sheet format. It should point you to your default directory for where the sheet formats are stored and where we can see all those different types that we saw available to us. And I'm just going to create a name for this and save it. So now that sheet format exists. Now you can swap out sheet formats after the fact and what we want to do is we want to load that new file location for this sheet format in. So we want to right click on the tree where it says sheet format here and go on down to properties. And it still thinks we're using some custom sheet format here. So we want to actually choose standard sheet, browse down and we should see that file that we just saved. So this might seem like an unnecessary step, but it's pretty important. And this is a step that if you omit it, anytime you go to add a new sheet, it's going to ask you for the sheet format, if anyone's had that experience before. So um, even though we just created the sheet format and we're basically looking at it, we want to save it out and then load it in to this file. So when I click apply and yes, I'm not really going to see any changes on the screen but now this document is essentially linked to that file location for the sheet format. This means we're close to being able to save our document as a template. But remember, templates control additional parameters, and these are all set through our options. So if we click the little options wheel up top, everything under document properties is going to be adjustable by our template. So this includes our overall drafting standard, which I'm going to use ANSI, our units, which here by default are set to two decimal places, so I'm going to choose three decimal places in this case. For my angles, I might just do one decimal place. We can also control things like under the detailing section, what kind of things are automatically inserted when you're creating views. So if you like automatic insertion, you can turn all this stuff on. I'm going to personally turn these off for me. And you have very granular control over a variety of things. So if we just quickly click through here, let's say at dimensions, we can see we have adjustments over the spacing of the arrows, the leader lines, precision, lots of things that can be customized here, balloons and notes, as well as your overall line font, line style, and line thickness. 
So I think for many users, if you don't have a specific drafting standard in mind, starting with the relevant standard, either ANSI or ISO, and then just modifying your precision, your units, and maybe a couple other settings might be all you need. But SOLIDWORKS does give you the options to really customize the appearance and behavior of your drawings. So once I have these things adjusted, I'm going to click OK. And I have my sheet format loaded, so I should be ready to save my template. And again, I'm just going to do a file, Save As. And this time we're going to choose from the pull downs that are available and choose the type as Drawing Templates. This should bounce you over to your default directory for templates. I'm going to name this custom template and click Save. Now as soon as that's done, I don't need this document open anymore. I should be able to close it. And I'll do a File New and I see available in my list of templates the custom template here. And we even see the preview that the sheet format is associated with it compared to our default drawing template which doesn't have a sheet format associated. So if I click OK to load the custom template, we'll see it asking me to insert my part. And as soon as I place that, all those properties down here should populate. And I can begin the process of placing views. Remember, I can't edit this title block area unless I go into the Edit Sheet Format mode. So for any future modifications, you can basically follow the same procedure we did here. Edit your sheet format and modify the title block area. Remove whatever views are on this sheet and save the updated version of the sheet format. Make sure that new version of the sheet format is the one that's selected here. In the sheet properties, make any changes to the document properties that you might need and then save the new drawing template. Hopefully you found this video helpful and let us know if you have any questions about drawing template creation.